it's um, you experience thought, therefore thought exists. You experience a stream of thoughts. You have a collection of ideas. We call that mind. So mind exists. This is something you know with absolute certainty. It cannot possibly be false. Even if you are a little pink jellyfish floating in a, a bowl uh, with uh, the illusion of humanity being projected into your mind, um, it still has to be true that you have this experience, that you have this thought, you have these ideas. So this is the cart's rock. This is the cart's third place upon which to stand. This is the cart's foundation. He thinks that he's come up with an unshakable, unbreakable foundation for knowledge. And he has. This part of the cart is brilliant. He's got his absolute certainty. It's what happens next. Um, as he develops his argument that it gets weird, beautiful, and occasionally completely stupid. So, This pen is not the same as this one. You know, they're numerically different. But this pen is the same as this one. Okay. But what happens if I take this pen, put it behind my back with the other one, and bring it back? Oh, wait. Oh, I've missed a step. I have to name the pen. What is the pen called? Tom. Okay. This is Tom. The one behind my back is Herman. Okay. Here's Tom. Here's Tom with Herman. Which one's Tom? Now, ontologically, we know that one of them is Tom. But since I don't keep very good track of these things, I have no idea which one it is. I'd make a terrible decision. So, we have this concept of something now being the same as something later. Descartes uses this concept in his argument of the wax. Now, I have, in my mind, I have ideas of substance and sameness. this 
bizarre alien concept of innate ideas. Modern, scientifically rational people, not educate, Western educated people, do not believe in innate ideas. It's a weird idea that, that um, started with Plato, maybe before, and we don't have it anymore. But when Descartes was writing, it was a live possibility. It was something people believed was possible. So, there's two possible sources for the ideas in Descartes' head. Either they came from outside him, or they were there all along. Now, Descartes completes his argument in a way that's going to seem weird to us. This is Descartes' main argument. They could not have come from outside him. These two ideas could not have come from outside Descartes, so they must have been there all along. If they were there all along, they're what's called innate ideas, so innate ideas exist. Now, regarding substance, can anyone see the substance of this cup? <coughs> really? Where is it? <coughs> In the medieval mind, the medieval concept of substance, the original concept of the word is coined to describe. Substance is not something you can see. It's not something you can get from sense data. It has to be there to make the object the object, but you can't see it. You can't touch it. You can't experience it. Argument. This argument for what I'll call this. I'll call this premise P. Premise P. These ideas could not have come from outside. outside, it must come by sense data. That's the only way an idea can get into your head from outside your head, by sense data. Um, that is, you see something. Your, your idea of the existence of this cup comes from seeing it, right? Your idea of my existence comes from seeing it. 
our idea of the existence of Madagascar comes from people who say that they, or people they trust, have seen Madagascar. There are records of people going places and seeing it. Can anyone, and this is not, not a fair question because you're not prepared, but can anyone think of anything we know about the universe that where that knowledge was not gotten by somebody experiencing something. Um, we know about atomic collisions because we have cloud chains, maybe those little curly ones, those little lines. Um, we know about um, quantum mechanical effects or um, subatomic events because people look, we have these machines set up and people look at the dials and the dials tip over, you see a still scripture. We know about the existence of gamma rays because we have gamma ray detectors and there's these little graphs on instruments. Everything comes through sense data. So if the car can show that we know something without sense data, then he's proved that there's an idea that we didn't get from outside. Um, remember the wax. We've got this honeycomb of wax and we take it take it from a cold part of the room to a hot part of the room and all our sensory experiences of the wax change. It's cold, it's hard, it'll make a noise if you bang it against things. Uh, it tastes of honey, it smells of beaker. Uh, it's got all these properties. And then over time, you can see it transform into something unrecognizable. But it's the same wax. It's called a wax steam. Here, Steve. Here, we can recognize Steve. But if we rely if we rely on our sense data, we won't recognize Steve over here. What is it about Steve over here that makes him the same as Steve over here? Nothing. Nothing, right. There is no sense data that makes him the same. Wax, even though Steve 1 and Steve 2 have no sense data in common. Therefore, sense data. We have at least one innate idea. Okay. 
Now, the way Descartes works is that he proves, or he thinks he proves, one thing at a time. The first thing he proves is proved his own existence. From that, through this argument, the argument of the wax, he proves innate ideas exist. the existence of his own mind, and he is certain that there are ideas in that mind that could not have come from sensory experience, that could not have come from the world. So even if the world exists, and even if many or most of our ideas come from the world, there's at least two, sameness and substance, that could not have come from the world. There's at least two ideas that had to come from somewhere other than the world, had to be built into his mind, or had to have been generated by his mind, or something like that. Now, at this point, we raise the possibility of solipsism. Solipsism is the doctrine that only I exist. If you were a solipsist, that is, if you exist and are a solipsist, you will believe that you are the only being in the universe, that the, the rest of the, your experience, your experience is some kind of dream. Have you ever had a dream you can't control? You wanted it to end, but it wouldn't? How come shit from outside comes into your dream? Say again? Like wild bars and in my dream before. I don't know what's going on. Well, that's a dream that's a big dream intruding into a little dream. The solipsist would say, I have this big dream, and then there's little dreams inside it, and then little things inside this, and there's imagination, and I can control some parts of my experience, and other parts um, I cannot control. They're just sort of random. They just come at me. But it's all an illusion. Reality is an illusion. To the solipsist, there's nothing outside himself the rest of us don't have independent existence. We may be annoying, but we don't have independent existence. So, Descartes, at this point, risks being trapped in solipsism. <coughs> because if you can't prove, for Descartes, if you can't prove something with certainty, you haven't proved it at all. And he doesn't have certainty about anything outside his own mind. So where does Descartes look for evidence? He looks inside his own mind. That's the only place he can look where he can be sure of what he finds.
you've got the concept of attraction in your minds. According to Descartes, there's only three places this could have come from. It could have come from the outside world. The concept of perfection could, come, could have come from the outside world. It could have come from himself. He could have created it. Or uh, it could have come from a perfect being. in the room experienced something that is absolutely perfect, something that has no flaws whatsoever. <coughs> the car would say no. If you look hard, at, hard enough at anything, it will have a little bit of a flaw. A perfect day will have a moment of frustration. And that's enough to make it not perfect. I don't know if a perfect game in bowling or baseball counts, but it's obviously not perfection in the sense that the car means it. Perfect flower, perfect song, perfect mountain. There aren't any. Everything has flaws. Try to draw a perfect circle. Look closely at it. I mean, I can't draw a halfway decent circle, but if you can put it as good as you can get, there will be imperfections. If you look closely at modern machine products, they're covered in tiny little scratches and irregularities. They're just subluminal. So, according to Descartes, the fact that the outside world has no perfect things means that no one could ever have experienced a perfect thing. We've never seen a perfect thing. If we've never seen a perfect thing, how do we get the concept? possibility that this idea came from himself, that he generated the idea by experiencing himself or some aspect of himself. But Descartes isn't perfect. He claims he's not perfect because he doubts. Uh, that is a bizarre idea for me because I find that people who don't doubt are generally not very bright. Um, doubting is something intelligent people do something that stupid people tend to avoid. But in any case, we can perfectly, I'm perfectly willing to admit that Descartes isn't perfect. So he cannot got, have gotten the idea of perfection by experience of himself, by contact with himself. So a perfect being exists. Remember, Descartes thinks that these logical steps are following with certainty. He thinks that he's proved beyond a shadow of doubt that a perfect being exists from this argument. perfect being be? Who do we know that's perfect? 
So I haven't been born yet, so you don't know about me. God is perfect. So God exists. His proof goes, I exist, ideas exist in my mind, they can't come from the outside. So, God exists. So, at this point, Descartes is certain of two things. He exists, and God exists. The rest of the world, the rest of the universe, he's not sure about that. Maybe, maybe not. <coughs> at this point in the argument, Descartes is uncertain about the existence of the external world. But he's sure he exists and he's sure God exists. Now, why is the card at this point? I'm sure that the external world even exists because he has not ruled out the existence of the evil genius. The evil genius could exist and it could be systematically de deceiving him. <coughs> so if he wants to go on and do science, <coughs> to have knowledge of the external world, he's got to prove that it exists and he's got to prove that it can be known through the senses. Fortunately, he has a foundation for that argument. He has a foundation for that program. God exists. He's going to derive everything from the existence of God. God is perfect. Um, well, we just know that God is perfect. God is defined as a perfect being. systematic deception. Imagine that you have an acquaintance who has been systematically lying to you about something. Um, I just saw the movie Moliere in which uh, this rich fool is being manipulated by this impoverished aristocrat. The rich fool is in love with a beautiful young widow and he's wooing her by proxy. He's handing over gifts to the aristocrat and notes and things and so asking him. And the aristocrat is telling the rich fool, oh yes, she's very impressed by your gifts. She's, um, she's interested. Everything is going well. What the aristocrat doesn't tell the fool is that He's pressing his own suit with the widow. Um, he's giving her the presents for pretending they're coming from him. So he's using the fool. Now, suppose you had a friend or an acquaintance who was working you like that. And another friend knew about it and let it go on. 
would you think that that other friend was perfect? I, I, I mean, I wouldn't. So, no perfect being would allow systematic deception. <coughs> it's an imperfection. It's a bad thing. God's perfect and doesn't do bad stuff. So, so the evil genius is out. There is no evil genius. genius does not exist. Well then, um, we're not being systematically deceived. If we're deceived, if we're mistaken, it's unsystematic. if you could never be sure of anything, if every piece of information you had was significantly unreliable, you could never trust anyone. I once saw a, a TV interview with the guy that the movie The Godfather was based on. He was sort of Godfather by a young mafiosi. And it was based on a real guy. And this guy was later um, interviewed on TV by um, Bill Mark. And the guy said something very interesting. He said the Mafia is all about trust. That's how the Mafia works, trust. Without trust, nothing can happen. Think about what your life would be like if everyone you knew was untrustworthy, think about what it's like to deal with untrustworthy people. You can never know the truth. You have to have at least some trustworthy, reliable people in your life. And it's the same with knowledge. It's the same with the universe. Something has to be trustworthy or we'll never know anything. And if we can never know anything, that's bad. God isn't going to put us into that kind of position. God is not going to put us into a position where we're tortured by uncertainty. A perfect being would make us able to discover truth. our best justified beliefs are true. What's our best justified belief out of all the beliefs that we could write down? You know, um, say, I start with saying, uh, the great attractor exists, Madagascar exists, uh, giraffes exist, the universe exists, Disneyland exists. Out of those beliefs, which one has the most justification? The universe exists, right? If the universe doesn't exist, nothing exists. So that's our best justified belief. If the universe exist, doesn't exist, nothing exists except me.
the cop says known, he means known with certainty. Remember the discussion of Plato? I pointed out that all our knowledge of the, of the world is uncertain to some degree. Descartes does not go along with that. Descartes thinks that we can have certainty. He thinks that there's a world that exists separate from our experience, and some of our ideas of that world correspond to the way the world actually is. The universe exists and can be at least partially known. What does that tell us about our sense? How do we know the world? How do we know things about the world? The only way we have of knowing about the world is our senses. sensory experience could be, could turn out to be wrong, some more likely than others. The Descartes starts from, okay, we don't know that the senses are reliable. Starts with the Kajita, goes through innate ideas, exists as the perfect being, and he thinks he's proving these things with certainty. He exists with certainty. The eight ideas exist with certainty. The perfect being exists with certainty. God exists with certainty. He thinks that he has proven the existence of God beyond any doubt whatsoever. It is, it is it's, it's almost logically impossible for God not to exist. God's existence is, is necessary. Is necessarily true. It could not be false. Because God doesn't exist, the evil genius cannot exist. The senses are reliable if used correctly. Senses are reliable if used correctly. Oh, I missed a spot. I missed a very important point. thinks he's proved. Science is possible. The careful thinking through of the implications of sensory data is possible. We can come up with knowledge of the world through the senses. And it has the same foundation as religion. God exists. The possibility of doing science is founded on the existence of God. In a way, this is absolutely brilliant. 
He started from just sort of contemplating his own label, proved the existence of God, proved that science is possible, and proved that science and religion, or philosophy and religion, are perfectly compatible. It's also completely insane. Did anyone notice that? So, it's brilliant. It's one of the, uh, well, let's put it this way. It is a stunning achievement in a couple of ways. One, it, I mean, it's just a very careful, very creative argument. Two, there's this thing called rationalism. This idea that you can sit and think things through. You can sit in an armchair, or maybe a nice cappuccino, a little espresso, uh, and think your way through all the issues of the universe. Think your way through to complete knowledge, to get reliable knowledge, to understand the world just sitting in an armchair. And you do it by pure logic. There's this idea that you can do philosophy by pure logic without paying any attention to sense data, any attention to experience. And Descartes proved that it couldn't be done. Because if one of the most brilliant minds in history cannot make this work, nobody can make it work. It can't work. Descartes failed brilliantly, and his failure showed us that this kind of philosophy can't work. He went down the blind alley. Now, if someone who wasn't as brilliant as Descartes had done this, then we could point to whoever it was and say, well, this guy was a fool. He didn't know what he was doing. So obviously, that could explain the failure. But the only way to explain the current failure is to say this is, it just can't be done. Anyway, that's called a personal opinion. All right, so. Card is brilliant, but every so often he goes bananas. And I'm going to try and lay out the banana points. What if we are with Descartes when he's going through this experiment, this demonstration, and we have a confederate, a friend of ours, knocks on the door when Descartes is halfway through. He's got this wax in his hand, he puts the wax down, he goes, he answers the door, while he's not looking, we get another piece of wax that looks the same. We put that down. The car comes back, says, where was I? He said, with the wax. He said, well, what was I doing with it? You were proving your new ideas exist? Oh, yeah, right. Okay, so I have this piece of wax. You saw it as a honeycomb. It's lost the smell now. Take it and it melts. 
Now, how do we know they're the same wax? And we all like to stick it under our hands because it's not the same wax. Who would Do we know it's the same wax? Remember the thing with the, uh, the red pens? And I don't have two red pens the same. Okay. Right. Is this pen the same as this pen? No. Okay. Is <coughs> this pen the same as this pen? No. Well, so you can't tell. When it's out of your sight for a second, you can't tell. How, you know, if I, I mean, if I take this pen and the more it goes there like that, we know if I, if it drops out of sight for a second, we don't know. What is sameness? Sameness is continuity of experience. When if I say, let's say I just have one pen. My other hand is empty and I'm not a magician and I have a hidden the pen on the back. I take the pen and I pass it behind my back with my hand to the other, bring it out. We have confidence that it's the same pen because we believe that if we've been watching, if we'd been able to see it, we wouldn't have seen a change of it. Sameness is continuity of experience. So where does the concept of sameness come from? The concept of sameness comes from doing things like, you know, putting one pen behind my back and then putting a pen and saying, is this the same one? Of losing track of things, of um, having the idea of property, of having the idea that something that's yours. Um, you ever see a crime show where the um, villain has murdered an innocent person and taken his or her place? It's not the same person. It's actually someone else. What does that mean? It means that, that, there's a, that the physical continuity is missing. So, is it impossible for us to get the idea of physical continuity, of continuity of experience from experience? We get our idea of sameness from our experiences. We have same and different is about experiences. Is that making sense? Yeah. Thank you. The substance of this cup, where do we get the idea of substance? Where did you guys get the idea of substance? You didn't? You didn't get it from your senses, because it's defined as something you can't sense. But you did get it from me telling up, talking about the cup and saying, here's this idea. The substance of the cup is not the color, it's not the shape, it's not the metal, it's not the material, it's not the sound, it's not the smell, it's not any of those things. The substance of the cup is something that stands behind the experiences. Well, we have the idea of something standing behind something else. And we have the idea of things we can't sense, because there are times we don't sense stuff. When the stuff is not here. For instance, we don't sense the elephant in this room, because there isn't one. So, when it comes to substance, do we really have um, reason to think that substance actually exists. Nowadays we don't, because we talk about matter. Um, 
Where do we get the idea of substance? Well, we made it up. We looked at things and we came up with the idea. It's human creativity. So that idea isn't innate either. So innate ideas, his argument for innate ideas, is anonymous. The concept of perfection. How do we get the concept of perfection? How do we learn this as kids? By the way, when you guys go on and have kids, beware of telling your kids that things are perfect. Because there's this um, thing that kids can get into called perfectionism, where they get extremely distressed if their productions are not perfect. Any they can obsess over tiny little flaws. Um, how do we get the idea that something is perfect? We talk, you know, you do something, you make something, your parents tell you it's perfect, or you look at something, why that's perfect. And you look closer and you see the flaws. You familiar with those diagrams where you draw a little circle around something and then blow it up big? Suppose suppose I was a good artist and I was able to draw an apparently perfect circle here. And then you come up to the whiteboard and you look at this part and instead of the perfect being the circle being perfect, it's extremely jagged. Now the cart might say that, look, this thing isn't perfect, so experiencing it cannot tell you, uh, cannot give you the idea of perfection. Is the rim of this cup a perfect circle? As far as you can tell, yeah, it looks like it. That's the key here. Right, sure, nothing in the world is perfect, but we see things and don't notice, and sometimes see things and don't notice their imperfections. Sure, this is imperfect, but I can't tell. As far as I can tell, it's a perfect circle. And sometimes we use the word perfect to mean no significant flaws. And we can also imaginatively correct, construct the idea of perfection. You can say, Okay, imagine, um, imagine a perfect car, a car that has nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Imagine a perfect day, a day where nothing goes wrong. Imagine a perfect circle, a circle that no matter how closely you look at it, you never find a flaw. Or a perfect work of art, you look at it, you look at it, can't find anything wrong with it. Or a perfect TV show, a perfect movie. We can imagine perfection. And by the power of imagination, we can come up with the, um, the concept. This premise is wrong. The fact that the outside world does not contain perfect things does not mean we can, cannot have experiences that seem to us to be experiences of perfection. We can see stuff and think it's perfect. Uh, and we can imaginatively create the idea of perfection. So the perfect being exists. It's another phenomenon. the inference from a perfect being exists to God exists.
That's a bit of a leap. It's a huge leap. God is not the only uh, the Christian God, the Catholic God, that we can't follow, is not the only possible perfect being. The same perfecto. Perfecto is a perfect being. What does perfecto do? Well, perfecto doesn't have to do anything. Perfecto is just sits there being perfect. What does perfecto want us to do? Perfecto doesn't need us to do anything. Perfecto is already perfect. What could you do for someone who already has a perfect life? If their life is absolutely perfect, and this person absolutely has everything he or she could ever want or need. Just the right enough, uh, just the right amount of trouble, just the right amount of frustration, good conversations. Anything you do with this person's life is going to make it less than perfect. Any change will make it less than perfect. What would that person want you to do? Stay away. So the inference from a perfect being exists to the idea of the Christian God is a very weak inference. Of course, without God, the evil genius might exist, which means the external world might not exist. Uh, the senses might not be reliable. Science may be impossible. So, one false inference. One weak inference would be enough to bring this structure crashing down. We found three. And like I can say it's a brilliant argument, and it's also totally bananas. I just, I just love this. God was one of the smartest guys in history. Now. It may be easy for us to see where the cart went wrong. That's because we have the benefit of around 500 years of other philosophy going into our modern worldview. At the, at the time, it was very hard to prove the cart wrong. So, okay, any questions? Any questions at all? I said hopefully. All right, you guys can go. Okay.